This is Carrie Seller from In the Girls Corner, and I am here with my very good friend, Alicia Halfpint Zapatella, who just won the Invicta Adam Weight Championship. Alicia, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, super excited. I'm doing well. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking about this for a long time. I know, honestly, like Hall of Fight Week, it felt so weird because I've been thinking about this moment for so long and it was and it was here. Yeah. And just it felt like I don't know, really odd. But after I won, it was it it, it was amazing. It's probably like <laughs> of my life so far. <laughs> But this is your second world title. You had won yeah. in Kun Lun. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're not a stranger to, to high pressure situations. Nope. nope. Which is nope. awesome. Wrestling since you were a child. Exactly. Definitely do it. Yep. I'm I'm used to the high pressure. I actually really like the high pressure more than the regular. I don't I don't know why. I you know, you're well, you're a fighter. you you are a different breed though. Like you said, you're a problem. Figure it out. And everybody's going to have to solve it. And clearly, every fight you have, you evolve. Every fight, you get better. Every fight, you mix it up. Your foot works. And literally, every time I watch, it's getting better and better. They're, you're going to hold that title for a long time. But I see bigger things for you. I'm excited to I'm excited to defend the title. But I'm also really excited to see what is on the table for me. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't even revisited it at all. Um, there were things in the talks. I just kind of wanted nothing to do with it for a couple of weeks and just kind of do whatever I wanted and yeah. uh, revisit that stuff. But, yeah. Well, you need you need to take a break. You're constantly working, uh, you know, on one thing or another, on one fight camp or another. And to take some time off, I think, is really important. Mm -hmm. Especially since that was such a, you know, such a big fight for you and, you know, a career changing fight. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows who you are now that didn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, the last couple, I mean, even everything you go, you know, from China, Japan, mm -hmm. you know, Invicta. Um, yeah, you've been in every situation. You've literally, you know, you were almost in the Olympics, you know, now you have two world titles under your belt and where do you go from here but defending it and hopefully seeing what else is on the table mm -hmm. um I think that career-wise I want to start creating other paths for myself um now that I'm a world champion I I would I would like to branch out I've always said that I would like to you know be on tv be a commentator be a broadcaster be something along those lines um i would also like to get into modeling something that i really enjoy um and it, movies would be cool for like stunt person what i i'm open to a lot of things um i just want to create different avenues for myself and why not i mean the reality of it is fighters do have a shelf life mm -hmm. and why you know once you conquer everything that you want to conquer and you've already done so much in you know the span of since I've been following you and I follow your career so it's I can see the evolution going very fast into that and but why not you know I've, a lot of people hate on people that that will go from fighting to either Hollywood or you know other avenues a lot of people don't do the modeling which I think is really smart for you you have a look you're in shape um you know the camera works really well with you I think you should definitely rock with that podcasting um mm -hmm. there's so much yeah. that you can do and people hate on it for no reason and it's like dude why not evolve right exactly I need to keep growing my brand and think about what's after fighting because it's not just fighting I, yeah. I mean, I put everything that I've done into fighting, so I need to brand myself literally as much as I can. Um, I, uh, podcasts would actually be really good. I love making videos. Um, I can't really do much of making videos during fight camp, but uh, outside of fight camp, I love doing it. I imagine what you get requests for because... I see what you do. And, you know, when you try the uh, the different kinds of things that you eat and stuff, you are are without realizing targeting a certain audience, which is really cool because I can only imagine some of the shit that people message you. <laughs> um, 
people, yeah, people do message me some interesting stuff, but <laughs> I'm open to doing videos of of all kinds, but like with like limits, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Mm You're like I'm about going fans only. <laughs> right. Exactly. Or whatever. It's <laughs> Although I do think there's a market for like jujitsu fans and stuff. Like I was talking to I think Mitzi and Kayleen and a bunch of girls. I think Pam and we were all talking about it because Tyler has said that he thinks it's setting women back. But is it? I mean, I do take offense when like the really famous people like Bella, whatever her name is, that went on and was supposed mm -hmm. to like do a video and never did it. It's like first off, you guys have your avenue to make money. Right. Let the rest right. of us have something. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Not that that's something that, like, I think all little girls should be doing and aspire to, you know, I, I have issues with that. But, um, you know, there are ways to keep it clean on there and mm. make a living. It's crazy. There's a woman that dresses up like a freaking dog in a costume and makes, like, a ridiculous amount of money a month. That's crazy. Yeah, there are definitely other avenues to go with with the, um, I don't know, with, with OnlyFans, but, uh. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not really what i don't know it's not yeah, in like, my, not my avenue but yeah. it's good for other people yeah <laughs> <laughs> so now i know you want to take some time off mm -hmm. when are you thinking you might want to get back in the cage just defend your title see what else is out there um i think that before i get back in the cage i want to do a jujitsu super fight so yeah, i like that yeah, so that's in the talks. Um, I would also like to go to Pan Ams, but I don't know when that is. And I would also like to go to Worlds. I would I really it. like to dive into jujitsu. Yeah, I love it. I mean, yeah. you pulled off the full first Von Flu in Invicta history, and I don't think there's any other females that have pulled that off in MMA. Are there? I have no idea if there are, but uh, I wasn't even meaning to finish the fight with that. I was just. I, I knew that the first time I shot in and I shot a low single, she went for a, for a guillotine. And the first time I just passed. And the second time, like, okay, she had the exact same response. I'm just going to Von Fleur. I'm going to use it to pass. But then, like, I could feel her starting to break under me. So I was like, oh, I'm going to finish this choke. So, yeah, it was, it was nice. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, my coach and I did a breakdown of it. I think we did a breakdown, but I, we've done so many things and we watched uh, all your fights and he was like, you know, that was, that was amazingly well timed the way you did it. Uh, your style is amazing. Coupled with the wrestling is like, you're so strong that once you get on top of someone, the good luck of them even getting up, you, you know, where the cage is, you have yeah. extremely well knowledge of where you are, um, yep. which is yep. huge. I, My IQ is gigantic. Thank you. For whatever reason, I thought that she was going to come at me, like, really hard in, like, the first, like, at the beginning of the fight. So I just had to weather the storm and figure out exactly how I had to beat her, and I knew I would, but I just had to figure it out first. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Once I figured out a major flaw in her game plan, I took advantage of it, and uh, I could feel the third round that she did not want to be underneath me so that I don't know that obviously I took her down again and just applied my game as I normally do it and it worked yeah and you know I could see a lot of I have a really like a lot of good fights that I would think would be good for you for a cat you know for Thank someone you. for you to defend your title to but I have a feeling they might throw a rematch at you and there's so many girls that you've fought that um are either on a win or i mean they all should also contend you know what i mean like I uh, lost for loss yes yep. so i'm just really interested to see what they offer you i'm i'm interested to see who it is too because i don't really know who they're going to give it to yeah it could be anybody i mean the, the division is so deep mm -hmm. it really could be anybody and i mean I don't know. I'm excited. I can't wait for that. And then, you know, if this is the thing, if like the UFC came calling, that's a 115 division, you mm -hmm. know, and, and and you are fighting girls in there that have been 115. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, I think that I would be able to probably um, grow, and I think that it would probably help my game plan, actually, because I'm already always the smaller fighter. Yeah. So if we add some strength and some quickness, I mean, I might be able to uh, figure it out. Um you are. You're always <laughs> be a smaller fighter. And I mean, when you look at also like Jessica Andrade going up to 125, she's going to be the smallest fighter in that weight class. Hands over. There's no way. There's yeah. no one smaller than her. So if you think about that, there might be something, mm-hmm. you know, to that. Exactly. And like, I feel comfortable when I'm a bigger weight. Like, we're only lifting once a week in order for me to not put on muscle weight um, to actually keep me smaller. Mm-hmm. So I think that it would be very easy to keep me strong and fast. As I've shown, my footwork has gotten so much better. I have evolved a lot. My head movement has gotten a lot better. I'm, I think I I could uh, hold my own. And there's some girls that are small enough for me to fight in the UFC. Absolutely. At 115, big time. There's so many. Um. Claudia, um, uh, oh, why can't I think of her name? Uh, Carla. Um, I put down the list of tinier girls mm-hmm. in that weight class that, like, why couldn't you? Why? There's no reason why you couldn't. Yeah. I would really like to fight Carla. I think that she would probably be one of my toughest uh, fights fight or one of my tougher fights, but I would really like to fight her. I'd want to see you end up against another grappler that likes to take people down, so I think that would be awesome because, you know, your jujitsu has grown so much, but you're – anybody that underestimates it is kind of foolish at this point anyway, because unless they've done their homework on you. Right. You know what I mean? Like your jujitsu couple, but your wrestling is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I, I've been working very hard on my jujitsu and I think that a lot of people just look past it because I pair my jujitsu and my wrestling together so well that people just, they, credit it all to my wrestling and I guarantee even getting this sub especially because it's a Von Flu joke that people are going to still say that I'm a very good wrestler and that's it but I mean it it, it's fine that's all right well it's funny because like I did a little jujitsu when I was younger more kickboxing and Muay Thai now I'm doing a lot of jujitsu and it's funny because people that say that it's either one I don't want to say jealous, envious, maybe the word is, because you can see both the wrestling and the jujitsu just because of how much I'm learning and how to like mount and all that stuff. I've watched the way you got it's I watched all I was like, oh, this is really cool. Now I can see it from a whole different perspective. <laughs> I loved it, but now I can see the mechanics of it, which mm-hmm. is wild. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's lot, yeah, it's a lot of fun and it's fun to watch. It's fun to actually I, I, I love jujitsu probably my new favorite thing in the entire world and I think that's good for you to do the competitions I yeah I think so too I have competed always ever since I was little so everything you might as well yeah and I think that jujitsu is fun for me fighting is fun but it's also it's a it's a stressor you know a lot goes into it jujitsu I can go out and I can just have fun yeah just do what I want to do and usually if I go out and I just have fun I perform phenomenally Phenomenally. it's funny because even with my injuries and I did I was convinced by you know my surgeon and some people that I wouldn't be able to do anything again and John was like no 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 we're we're gonna test you out a little bit and uh he was like no you're fine I mean he's like you know within reason you don't want to push yourself and if you feel like something's happening like what you're on like he had me in such a weird position the other day that I tapped anyway and it had nothing to do with the submission Half the time that he has tried to choke me out, and he said, he's like, it's so funny because I know I don't have to choke him, but I know how uncomfortable you are because he can't, he's like, your neck is so small. He's like, I almost can't get it in. And it's hysterical. That sounded so bad. He can't get the choke. It's so weird. <laughs> and, but yeah. And he's like, dude, he's like, and I feel it. And it's just more super uncomfortable. And I'm like, well, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not getting out of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It'll just be better if I decide to do any competitions, which I do want to do. Why That's- not? That's cool. I really enjoy competing, but like I, if I go to a regular jiu-jitsu tournament, there's never really any girls there that are really 
worth my time to compete against. Not to not to sound like no, it's true. But like, in so your I size, would like to in fight. your yep. weight class, are yep. they going to be worth it? And yep. you know, that's what we were talking about. John's like, you're probably not even going to find anybody. You're only a hundred and you know twelve pounds. He's like, we're <laughs> so they're not going to let you fight kids, and you're the size of a child. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's true, but I, people don't realize when you're tiny like that and you walk around at a certain weight, it's like, okay, well, good luck finding somebody. Mm -hmm. adult, most adult women aren't your, you know, our weight and size. Yep. That's very true. <laughs> it's, it's super true. You mm -hmm. know, you get, I've been told since I was, I've been told since I was 18 years old that they're like, literally so many people, you're not going to look like this forever. Your body style is going to change. You're not going to look like this forever. You're going to change. And here I am at 41 and I still am having problems gaining weight, not putting muscle on now. Now we've figured that out and we've solved that yeah. problem. on. But I could never keep that on. I was always like this just teeny tiny thing. And I think it all, it's just, it is what it is. People are built. Either you are, or you aren't. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I put on muscle so easily like you without do. trying so <laughs> you swell probably really fast too uh-huh it's, yep. it's a different it's a t very different body type yep i and you have reach strength too i could see that i hate to say it like that but it's so true you laughed at that meme that i put up you know what i'm talking about it's the strength that it's a different just completely different than like normal people. I know it sounds weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I put on muscle very easily. You do. Yeah. You do. You could see it. You could see it. And I mean, that's awesome, especially because of what you want to do. If you need to go up and wait, if you need to, you know, do a catch weight fight and meet somewhere in between, it's not going to be hard for you to do that. Yep. Not at all. Um, I don't know. And I feel, I feel better, bigger too. So if I, once I go up, I think that it'll be, um, it'll make me really happy. So well, you're going to get to eat more of what you want too. So it's like, <laughs> I know you like the same shit I do. It's like, how isn't that going to make you happy to be like, okay, now I can eat what I want. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I want that. Yes. I'm going to have that now. I don't have to worry about weight cutting or anything like that. Exactly. And now you take some time off as you should. You know, yep. it's so funny when you hear someone say, like, immediately, who do you, what do you want to do? Who do you want to fight? What do you, you know, who do you want to defend your title to? Like, take a break. Yeah. You're like, 25, I, right? Yeah. Take a fucking break. Like, even if it's for a couple months, you deserve I, it. Yeah. I kind of want to just travel for a couple of months and wow. maybe do some seminars. I am very open to it. But for the most part, I kind of just want to do whatever I want to do. Like, I love this. I have a car that's good on gas. I just want to go. And I haven't had a chance to ever. I just want a world title. I think that it's my time to just go do what I want. I agree. I mean, you've accomplished so much. And that's the highest that you can accomplish in, you know, in a fight organization. Any fight organization. You win the title, that's it. That's the, that's the best you can do. I, I mean, not... You know what I mean. Apart from doing a super fight, going up in weight class, whatever, two titles at the same yeah. time. I, that's, yeah. that's the pinnacle <laughs> of it. So to take some time for yourself, I think is really important. And you see world champions that keep their title for a long time, do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I think that it's essential for me because most of the fight is about my mind. Really yeah. keep my mind exactly where it needs to be and I meditate a lot I do a lot of things when I'm not training I do absolutely every single thing that I like to do to keep me mm -hmm. happy so um yeah go go just do whatever for a little bit and I'll be back I agree you know I think traveling is awesome you could go to different gyms there's mm -hmm. I mean you know I don't even think there's states you can find all over right now that aren't quarantining and stuff like that. There's places that aren't so crazy, but you have an opportunity then to like really go and like feel out other states and like meet new people and, you know, check out different training. And I think, I think that's a great thing. And especially like you said, you have a car that's good on gas and you know, mm -hmm. what better time than the present? Yep. 
Yeah. Why not? Why not? Is there anywhere you're thinking about going? Maybe the West Coast, East Coast, down South? Um, I haven't really put anything together yet. I want to go to the beach. I want to go. Um, I would like to go through Tennessee because it's a beautiful time of year. Yeah, um, so probably in Tennessee and maybe, f I don't know, maybe Florida. I'm not exactly sure yet. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to figure it out. Florida could go either way right now. You got to figure that that's, one out. But That's what I was, yeah. Uh, such a, Right now is such a tough time in that respect, but mm -hmm. you can really like, really figure it out by like really doing a little research and I know you you like to do all that stuff so you know you figure it out you get you have friends everywhere you'll be I able never to went out to California so I think that might be a good time but I don't know I'll have to figure it out obviously because like these times are weird so well that the fires you got to figure out where where is it okay these times are very weird mm-hmm I'm 41. I never thought I would see anything like this. I mean, I did, but I I personally thought it was going to happen in like 2001, uh, 2012. Like, I was never really that like, oh, the end of the world's coming person. But uh -huh. I really thought it would have, like, did the Mayans have it wrong? Did they have it wrong if it was 2020? They, they, they might have. And, but I don't think it's going to be the end everybody I actually my theory on it is that they had it right and the mm -hmm. end of the world as we knew it changed dramatically and the scope of everything how the news is so all over you know social media you can't get away from it the apps like we evolved hardcore from that yeah but yeah have we as a species and as a whole to more of have we come to spirituality and a place of elevation or have we you know stayed consistent or even gotten worse and I feel like there's such a split of people that are either yep or panned yep I I agree with that I was actually listening to a Buddhist talk about how she, there was just a shift at that time um it was wasn't really the end of the world but there was a shift and yeah a lot of people are now higher in uh consciousness but then there's a lot of people who just aren't so I completely agree I've noticed that it's like one extreme or the other people are like they're they're pretty into it or they're just not at all I'm excited though because I don't think it's gonna get any I I don't want to say that I just think it's going to get better from here. I think mm -hmm. if anything, we're going to see a lot of the same shit that's going on. They're just going to amp it up and make it look worse and worse and worse. But I think it's going to get better from here. I think I was talking to John about, about it the other day. And I think that MMA is going to be the new sport that everybody is going to love. It's going to be the new baseball. And I said it for years. I said it for a long time. It's going to take over baseball. It's going to take over football. It's going to take over basketball. It's going to be the America sport. Why? Right? Mm -hmm. it's the only sport that gets to be a little political, like Colby Covington, he was, he's not racist, he's just a little political. It's, there's a big major mm -hmm. difference. Don't play the national anthem, which there's no chance for fighters to kneel and people to get pissed. Mm -hmm. There's no opportunity for that. Yep. The UFC, they're a fight kick, so there's no opportunity. I like that Invicta does let you guys wear what you want. And, you know, mm -hmm. Ashley had her, you know, the um, back to blue, obviously, that's very much about a black to blue outfit. Is she a cop? Yeah, yeah, she is. I love it. And I think that it's great, but I don't, it's funny because people don't get mad at it. It's mm -hmm. different. Yeah, um, people, yeah. people really don't get mad at it with MMA. I actually have never even noticed that they don't play the national anthem or anything. I really like that, now that you point that out. <laughs> John said, say a thing. He's like, yo, I think you're the first person that has ever pointed out that MMA doesn't do, they used to, the UFC used to do the, a national anthem, which I'm a little shocked that he doesn't because he's such a good, uh, Dana White, such good friends with Donald Trump. I think that might change. I remember going to Bellator, the first one at National, uh, at, National at Madison Square Garden. And mm -hmm. I remember them playing the Russian national anthem, because I think it was Fedor, I could be wrong, and our national anthem, but Dave Navarro came out and did it on the guitar. 
nobody sat for either. Everybody stood for both and respected them. We just do it differently. MMA is just different. It's a, there is a part of it that's a show where, like, I think Colby Covington does really like Donald Trump, but I think he ran with something that worked for him. I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a show. You got Jorge Masvidal. It absolutely has his shtick. You mm-hmm. know, the street Jesus. Definitely. I love that. I love that Colby calls him street Judas. I thought that was fucking great. And I like Jorge. I like it too. Yep. Uh, Marty Fake Movement. I almost, I almost, I was like, this guy is the shit. And the fact that the president called him, another thing that I want to bring to everybody's attention, <laughs> that's presidential attention that MMA has never got. Ever. No never. president has ever said, I want you guys at my rally. I'm going to point you out. He, at the rally in Vegas, he like mm-hmm. introduced Dana White and all the fighters that were there, introduced them one by one. Colby, Justin, Henry. I forget who else. There was somebody else. Oh, some I can't remember. And uh, Ali Abdelivi. Everybody introduced them all. Then calls Colby at the fucking press conference. Like that's the most attention MMA has ever gotten to regular people. That's cool. That he he's definitely done. He he's played this role very well. Yeah. Yeah. It's smart. Uh huh. He's no different than Conor McGregor. Mm hmm. Exactly. Like, Chael Sonnen was my favorite oh, ever. I love him. <laughs> He's the bad guy. I fucking love him. And you know who's also running with the, um with it now? Tito Ortiz, because he's also running for something in California. He's a big Trump supporter. Huge. And they all love him. Um, And Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell was at the Save Our Children rallies. Oh, I didn't know that. Brandon Vera as well. Oh, okay. I didn't didn't know any of those. I had a KTU DJ refer to me as Carrie the Truth Speller. I'm like, I, as much as I love that, and I do, and I think that is like such a compliment, but unfortunately that name belongs to Brandon Vera, and I can never just take that. I'd have to ask him and be like, listen, can I rock your nickname? <laughs> can, I rock your, can I rock your fight name? <laughs> I was like, I like that though. Thank you for referring to me as that. Like, it works. It it does work. It works very well. Right? I'll take yeah. it. I, and you know, I mean, hey, I got the three day Facebook ban, so this won't go up on Facebook till my ban is over. It will go up on YouTube. I will put it up on my uh, iPod podcast. I'll extract the audio. So okay. it's gonna, yeah, we're gonna put this everywhere. It's gonna be awesome. And then I'm gonna have you on my podcast so we can talk more about what you know all the real like shit that's actually going on um i want to do a ladies round table i would love to have like maybe five female mma fighters on i like that a lot i think that that would be a good time do you know of anyone that you want i do i have i know mitzi mary wants to morgan hickam wants to i might have pronounced her name wrong um kayleen would do it and brooke mayo has been uh um, like she comments on my stuff and I was like, you know, I wonder if she's into message her. She was like, oh, I'm so into that shit. She's like, let's do it. That'll be a great time. So we don't, you know, peep th- that I don't want to call it a silent majority of like, oh, we're trying to, but there's just a silent majority of people that are sick of this shit and realize what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's big. And a lot of them are females. Yep. The feminine yep. energy, the divine feminine is coming hard. Exactly. Like, we're yeah. coming to the heart. I'm so excited. I love um, it. Um, cause I I do a lot of reading about the goddess. Yeah. So like the matriarchy. I've been reading about times of like when women were in power and like or had a lot more say than they mm-hmm. do now. And it was a great time. And I've definitely noticed that the divine feminine has been like on the rise a lot lately. I'm super excited for it. And I mean, I feel like women's MMA is definitely a good pioneer for mm-hmm. that. It's a good, um, it's showing that we can fight and still be feminine and be oh. strong and still be pretty and, you know, be bigger and still look great. And you know what I mean? Big is beautiful. There's so many different, you could be, anybody could do MMA. Any, any, you know, until you get to a certain age, but then you could do jujitsu. Anybody can. Huh? It's, 
it's an amazing time and I'm super excited. I can't, I just cannot wait to see what the future holds for you. Thank you. I can't either. And I think that um, I'm a very unique case because I'm, I'm very small and like, I, people wouldn't really expect much if they saw me out and about, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely an interesting, interesting case. <laughs> yeah, you're a unicorn. I consider you a unicorn. Where there's very few people out there that I can give that title to, and I like to consider myself one as well. And it's um, women. It, I I feel like it's a woman thing. I feel like it's a very unique woman that you don't see often. You know what I mean? And the the type of woman. So I hope you come and travel up to the East Coast so I could come and see you or we could meet up or something. I was actually gonna message you about that, and I think that that would be like a perfect way to go like first I I so, love it yeah and I would even take a road trip with you and go de- wherever from there because I got t- nothing but time yay okay that um, will be so a great time so down and you know there's tons of gyms here in the city in Long Island I'm gonna have my studio it's gonna be a podcast slash mm-hmm. it's gonna be a tiny gym okay yeah mats we got we got mats and everything Ah, uh, that'll be a great time. You know, my coach is like, he's like, fuck it. He's like, let's do a gym. Because he's the second to read that black belt under mm-hmm. um, Matt Sarah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm cool. super excited. So, Alicia, I, I, anything you want to talk about? Shout out anything before we go? I, I like to keep it around a half an hour because people lose interest and it's like. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's so weird. I see that with my, my, with my YouTube videos. It's like after a half an hour, they kind of like drift off. <laughs> so um I want to say thank you to my sponsors first. Let me get let me make sure that I don't um miss any. So um first um Heidi Miller, she is fantastic. I love her. Her husband uh Tim, he owns a law firm and they sponsor me, so thank you. And uh, Griff Ellis, he he sponsored me for like my since I was in nationals um, wrestling, or like since like the very beginning of my career. A long time. And, yes, very long time. Um, Jay General, and then Paul with Young Living, Roadhog MMA, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Morgan with Breakwall Barbecue in Conneaut, Ohio, and their barbecue is fantastic. <laughs> um, go Cleveland Productions, Harbor Tattoo. They they do some great work. I don't yes, think yes, yes, Fred Bernie, nope. right? Yeah, I don't think that I showed this one on here. It's I love Shiva. it. I've been looking at all your tattoos, girl. I see them every time you get I, the pictures. I'm like, this is amazing. I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I want to go and finish my sleeve. Um, mm-hmm. I want to get a lot of it colored in. Um, I'm working on mine. It's coming soon. Um, I feel you. I'm so excited. And then Dave LeVague with um, Evergreen Campground. And my coaches, James Gray and Tim Farr and Jackson Barlow. There's there's a lot. Of, oh, John Childback. And also, last two, well, three, <laughs> Chris Down and Hillary Down and then Mary Vance. Those are my strength and conditioning coaches, my massage therapist, and my nutritionist. Amazing. And where can everybody find you on your social media? On 